Uh, but if you're one of these people that, and we're going to go through some examples here because they're in this article, and I'm going to detail the problems with this. If you're one of these people that that wants to do this your way and wants to blame me because it didn't work doing it your way, then that's what, that's you're who I'm talking to today. Okay. Uh, here in the second paragraph, it is it's. This, this is one of the more wonderful sentences I've ever written. <laughs> it is common to want what you cannot have. Right? Now think about when you were a little kid. When you were five. Think about all the stuff that you wanted that your parents weren't going to give you because they couldn't afford it or because you didn't need it or because... You know, first one thing and another reality intervened, that sort of thing. Right? I remember being being 12 or 13 and wanting Mama and Daddy to go out and buy a Dodge Challenger <laughs> with a four-speed on the floor. Now, my goddamn parents were not going to buy a 1972 Challenger. You know? <laughs> They're not going to do that. They're old people. They're not going to buy a car like that just because I want them to have one. You know, so that's a perfect example of wanting what I cannot have. You know, more recently, people who want clean energy but who don't want nuclear power. Yeah. Now, there's an example of something that you can't have. Yeah. It's just you can't have that. Because of the math. I'm sorry, the math doesn't work. If you don't understand that, you haven't had freshman chemistry. Okay? You can't have enough power to charge the batteries of 50 million Teslas without (laughs) nuclear power plants. Because windmills don't work. And a lot of them. And solar panels don't work because they don't generate enough energy per, because of the BTUs that operate the damn things. It's just math. Yeah. This is just the math. You is can't nobody worried that. about bouncing all that light back into the atmosphere? Like, no, that, I mean, that's that a, a very good point. I saw that mentioned today. <laughs> that's pretty weird. You know, solar panels are reflective. They do, at some level, increase the albedo. Yeah. And if you don't know what the albedo is, then... You're in the wrong field here, okay? It's, uh, so you you it's inefficient. You, it, it's terribly inefficient, and it's and you can try to make it more and more efficient, but it it boils down to the fact that there's only a certain amount of sunlight that falls on a square meter of the Earth's surface, right? And that's not enough if you capture it at one hundred percent efficiency, which you can't do. If you capture it at one hundred percent efficiency. It's still not enough to get much of anything done, except for maybe your house, if you're careful about the use of your electricity. Which people aren't. No. Well, and and, and the whole argument doesn't even matter because you have the option of nuclear power. Yes. Perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. Perfectly efficient. Don't tell me about the nuclear waste bullshit because that's all all bullshit. There are boats running around the ocean right now with thousands of people on them powered by nuclear powered by reactors. nuclear reactors nuclear waste is that disposal problem was solved 40 years ago but nobody wants to talk about it and it's it's they're perfectly safe ways to dispose of nuclear waste and you don't even have to have nuclear waste if you make a thorium reactor but no we can't have that see so when you start talking about not having nuclear, then you're either dealing with people who aren't actually grown-up adults or you're dealing with people who own solar panel companies right. who have a different agenda. You're dealing with people who are actively involved in the wind farm business. Yeah. Criminals in the wind farm business. So you can't have what you want all the time you just it's not possible now if you want to get big and strong 
You have got to lift more weight than you're lifting right now, and you have to do so in a programmed, regular, controllable fashion that produces the right amount of stress from which you can recover if you grow a little bit. And then you have to provide the growth potential you have to provide that which your body needs to grow, which is food and rest. All right? And always it requires more food than you think it's going to need. And it requires more rest than you've really got time to devote to it. And by that I mean you don't get to run on your off days. Okay? You want to get big and strong, there's, there's ways to do this. And we know what they are. We've, if you'll follow our program, that's the way to do it. But the, depending on who you are, okay, all of this shit's going to look different. And that's the, the, the nature of this article right here. All right? So the principles are, are, are basic. All right? Stress. Recovery. And then adaptation. You have to apply the stress. That's what the barbells are for. That's what two and a half pound plates are for. That's what one and a quarter pound plates are for. It's certainly what 45 pound plates are for. It's what racks and benches are for. For you to apply the stress. And we teach you how to do that in the blue book. All right. And then you have got to recover from that stress adapting your biology to the new level of stress adaptation, homeostasis, that is required for you to continue to generate that improved level of force production against the external resistance, which is how you apply the stress to yourself. And then that process repeats. It repeats over and over again. And in every situation, if you are alive, <clears throat> barring some horrible metabolic deficiency that you've got, which most people don't have, you get bigger and stronger. You accumulate, listen to this word, you accumulate strength by the process of growing your muscle. Muscles have to get bigger to get stronger. Muscles are made out of protein that you have to eat. The process of rebuilding muscles into bigger muscles requires calories outside of just the protein that's involved in building the muscle mass. And you have to eat those calories. And if you do these, you will grow. You'll get bigger and stronger. doesn't matter if you're 18 or 52 or 75. The process is the same. All right? But the process looks different depending on who you are and depending on your current situation. But don't lose sight of the fact that the process is very predictable and it's repeatable and it's controllable and it will produce the same quality of results for everyone that does the correct process. Okay? I'm going to give you some examples. All right? Of some of the different situations we run into when we're trying to get people bigger and stronger. Here's an example. I want to get big and strong. I'm currently 22 years old, 5'9", and around 150 pounds. 12% body fat. See, somehow he knows his body. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> right. Oh, that tells me something about him, doesn't it? That's exactly right. At 5'9", 150, if somebody tells you their body if fat. If somebody tells you your body fat, you're 5'9", 150, then yeah. you're a hard-headed motherfucker. Because you're, five, because you're 22, primarily. But that indicates problems with what I'm going to tell you to do. Right? I've been doing starting strength for three months now, and my weight has come up, my body weight has come up eight pounds since I started after three months. Was this a real instance? Do you remember? 
or is this just a yeah example? There's, there's a, no this is a synthesis of gotcha of of questions we yeah. th- these are all syntheses of yeah. questions that we've received uh my squad is now stuck at 135 and i'm thinking that i need to move to the texas method to get unstuck any advice you could give me i'd appreciate it and by the way, that 135 could be 225, could, could be, be 275. Any number. All, those, all, those, all those numbers would apply That's right. in this instance. Yeah, anything that – any number, if you're 5'9 and 150 pounds – and you're stuck at any number on the bar. Exactly. That's the problem. That's, yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Okay. So, situation like this. Stress, recovery, adaptation is not occurring. Because in this case, recovery is not being paid attention to. Recovery involves eating enough to cause an adaptation, to permit, rather, to permit an adaptation to the stress. And to continue to accumulate that adaptation week after week, month after month. Because a kid like this that's been training for three months, had he done the program, would not weigh 150, he'd weigh 180. He wouldn't be stuck at 135, he'd be stuck at, if he's stuck at all, he'd be squatting 315. And he may be... He, or 275, anyway. He may be... It doesn't matter, but he may be 15% body fat, which would be imper- it would be imperceptible. The difference would be... You, you cannot tell the difference. You wouldn't be able to tell. In a person, but, uh, whether it's 12% body fat or 15% body Especially fat. Especially if they've, if they've uh, put 150, 200 pounds on their squat. Right. What you will see if they put 150, 200 pounds on their squat, and since they commensurately put 200... 50 pounds maybe on their deadlift right what you're going to see in a person like that is you're going to see broader shoulders bigger neck more muscular forearms a bigger wider chest deeper hips front to back deeper hips outer quad sweep all this other shit that bodybuilders are concerned about right you're going to see all of that in that 30 pounds of weight gain. Yep. Kid's going to look completely different. Right? And it's all because. And that is even under the circumstances of having increased body fat percentage. Now, this is the part that nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants to accept this. Kid comes in at 12% body fat. He wants to be 10% body fat. Yep. He doesn't want to be 15, 16, even 18% body fat, even though he will look better. Because in his mind is Frank Zane. In his mind is a ripped Olympia competitor. That is the picture he has. And he doesn't understand because he hasn't been made to understand that that's not what he wants. And that's not what he can have. You can't always have what you want. You want to look better? Listen to what I'm telling you. Yep. All right? Because all I'm trying to sell you is the book. Once you own the book, I'm done with you. <laughs> you don't have to come to a seminar. You don't have to buy any. We don't sell, we don't sell anything that you need that you can't get somewhere else except the book. They need that sweet shirt though you got on. This is a pretty damn good shirt, yeah. don't you think? Yeah, that's a that's a need, not a want for that's sure. A, yeah, that's a that's a you really you do. If you're gonna be out in public, you need this shirt. <laughs> that's absolutely true. Fucking rip a toe scowl on your yeah. chest. <laughs> so you know this is this is. This is what you got here. The people, you got a problem with your perception of what body fat on you versus muscle on you is going to look like. 
Yeah. All right. And what it, one of the things that comes down to because people generally, you know, they, they at this point people know what what's involved with starting strength in terms of the exercises and stuff. So people generally don't have a problem with that. Um, and, and even in this article, you know, this twelve year old article, um, you don't really need to convince people about the lifts or doing three sets of five and all right. that shit. No, but, that's that's been that yeah, conversation's right. been. And and we may have we may have covered this in the last one with the first three questions, but. Um, most of this stuff, the, the program is not just the lifts and the sets of five and the, uh, you know, the, the exercise selection. The program is, uh, and the hard part of this is everything that happens in between the workouts. Yes. And that's what we're talking about here. You know, this, right. this, the, the, the weight loss and the weight gain situation are both things that require habit changes in your yes. life. It's intrusive. You have the, to pay attention to what you eat. You have to pay attention to how you recover and how you sleep and what else you're doing. Right. And those are the things that people have a lot of fucking trouble with. You're only spending maybe four and a half, five hours a week if you're just fucking around in the gym right. doing the program, doing the workout part of the program. But the part of the program that is critical to the recovery and adaptation thing takes place at home. Right. It takes place all the time. It's waking hours are all involved in this it's much more intrusive than the workout part of this thing right you don't like to eat you don't like to drink milk i'm asking you to eat drink milk four or five times a day mm -hmm. that's a much bigger in, invasion it's much more invasive yeah than than just going to the gym and doing squats right. presses you've already committed to the gym part that's not a yeah. problem you know that's not the problem